Paul Pierce. At a point, not only was he arguably one of the best small forwards in the league, but his Celtic squad also dominated the Eastern Conference. But both of those things were a little short-lived because of LeBron James. Hmm, maybe that's why Paul Pierce can't keep LeBron's name on his mouth. There's no denying Paul Pierce's importance in the history of the NBA. As an NBA champion and Boston Celtics legend, his words certainly holds weight in his new role as an analyst. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, of course, but when that opinion discounts someone heavily involved in the GOAT debate and a player that you've seen firsthand several times, it's just egregious. Kareem, Magic, Jordan, Tim Duncan, Kobe, Bird, these guys are all top 10 players who either help build up their organization or continue the tradition. What has LeBron did to build up any organization? Besides how his arguments don't have any logic to them whatsoever, it's just a strange thing for Pierce to say, seeing how similar him and LeBron are. So what gives? They both play the same position. They both suited up for LA teams. They both, uh, well, okay, I guess maybe Paul Pierce wasn't dubbed the chosen one coming out of high school and compared to Michael Jordan before stepping on an NBA court. But he was drafted to a struggling team and immediately became the go-to guy for his squad. Offensively, he was a problem for defenders. In just his fourth season in 2002, he led the Celtics to the playoffs for the first time in almost a decade, falling just short of the NBA Finals. He got so many buckets, he even earned his own dope-ass nickname, given by Shaq, who, by the way, was incredible at dishing out monikers. So when you have a rookie coming into the league in 2003, who plays the same position and is already praised as a star before clocking a single minute of game time, I would feel some type of way about that as well. But Pierce let his game do the talking. In their second time sharing the court, he lit up LeBron and the Cavs, even stripping the youngster in the closing seconds to seal the game for his seeds. He also did do some talking during the game, just not directly at LeBron. After a tough foul on James, Pierce got into a bit of a screaming match from the courtside seats with Otis Carter, the father of one of James's close friends and someone who Bron considers an uncle. After drilling each shot, Pierce would make sure to look Carter's way and let LeBron know he might need to shut him up. However, that went against what Pierce had to say off the court. He was quick to praise the rookie's talents, which he wasn't alone in doing. LeBron had a great season and was voted Rookie of the Year, and that award only intensified the hype surrounding him. But even with all that hype, the family feud between Pierce and LeBron's uncle served as marinade for the beef that hit the grill the following season. Things got a bit testy during a 2004 Celtics preseason game against the Cavs. Pierce went at LeBron scoring back-to-back -back baskets and made sure to let it be known he sauced up the reigning Rookie of the Year. The two went at it again, which provoked Pierce to just casually spit towards the Cavs bench. Cause that's just a normal thing people do, I, I guess. Well actually, judging by their reaction, not normal to LeBron and the Cavs, and after the game, they decided it was time to throw hands. The fight was only prevented because Pierce's teammates quite literally carried him away as if he wasn't the dude just spitting at people. It was a preseason game. There were no stakes at all, but that's where things took a pause. The Cavs and Celtics weren't really contenders at the same time, so there was nothing really to get excited for when they played. Plus, the two kind of squashed the beef, growing closer to each other over the 2005 and 2006 All-Star games. LeBron had early success, but he carried the whole team along the way. Sure, it's easy to call his roster trash, but those dudes made the NBA for a reason, and I'm sure they could bust my ass any day. Pierce's roster wasn't much better, but that all drastically changed going into the 2007-08 season when Boston formed their big three. Now with Pierce having some real deal help by his side, and LeBron, well, still being LeBron, Pierce and James met up for the first time in the postseason. The series more than lived up to the hype, with both James and Pierce being the leaders for their teams in pivotal moments. If there is one thing LeBron didn't learn from playing against Pierce, you gotta remove family members from sitting courtside. During Game 4, Pierce wrapped up LeBron on a drive to the rim that spilled into the stands. In the stands was Gloria James, LeBron's mother, who hopped out of her seat and began yelling at Pierce. It's just classic mama instincts kicking in to protect their little king when LeBron politely told her to have a seat. Pierce had some fun with it the next day in media availability, 
saying while his mom is older, she could probably put up a good fight against LeBron's mom. LeBron was obviously more embarrassed with himself, especially a day removed from Mother's Day. Luckily, no mothers were harmed, but in the end of a difficult seven-game series, the Celtics closed out a classic Game 7 on the back of Pierce. LeBron and Pierce went shot for shot, but LeBron's lack of help was even more notable in the series. Clearly frustrated, LeBron stepped to the podium after the game and demanded the front office make some moves. I imagine it also couldn't be the greatest feeling for LeBron, watching Pierce in the seas flex the championship trophy he was still pursuing. On the bright side, GM Danny Ferry and the Cavs brass took note of their superstar's anger and acquired Mo Williams. Wait, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. Sorry, Mo. Then after striking out on landing all-star forward Amar Stoudemire before the 2009-2010 trade deadline, the Cavs settled for veteran Antoine Jameson. But they do also have an over-the-hill shack. With LeBron playing MVP basketball, the Cavs cruised to the playoffs, where they once again met up with Pierce and the Seas in the Eastern Conference semis. However, despite being the favorite, LeBron fell short again. Celtics coach Doc Rivers drew up a game plan that focused on Pierce defending LeBron. It worked. Pierce's offensive output over the last three games of the series went down, but they won all three games, in part because he helped slow down LeBron. Watching the clearly dejected LeBron walk off the court after the series wrapped with his forthcoming free agency looming perfectly captured the magnitude of the moment. LeBron and the Cavs simply collapsed, and it was once again at the hands of Pierce and the Celtics. Something had to change, and a decision had to be made. A decision in which LeBron took his talents down to South Beach. His words, not mine. And how could you really blame him? The Cavaliers' front office couldn't get the job done. The man needed some help, and now he had it forming his own big three. But even in the regular season with a new look squad, Braun still struggled to get past Pierce in the seas, which included a loss at home where Pierce quickly took his chance to shade LeBron. That's just the regular season, though. Luckily for Braun, the two met again in the playoffs. This time around, LeBron finally got his victory over Pierce and the Celtics. After closing out the series in Game 5, an emotional LeBron fell to his knees in appreciation of the moment. He had made it to the Eastern Conference Finals before. Shit, he carried the Cavs all the way to the NBA Finals. But this was different. He had finally beaten Pierce and the Seas, a team that in many ways defined his legacy up to that point. Then just like that, Pierce got his chance at revenge the following year. The now old man Celtics clawed their way all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals for a rematch with the Heat. Game 1 marked the 19th time James and Pierce met in the playoffs, so of course reporters had the obvious question of, what's your relationship like? Which the two answered generically, LeBron talking about how they know each other's likes and dislikes while throwing Pierce a compliment. Pierce talked about how they built up a mutual respect for each other throughout the years, while also oddly finding a way to compliment himself as the best at his position, even though they play the same position. Anyways, there's some truth there in those vague quotes because the two once again brought the best out of each other. In a hard-fought seven-game series, their respective teams relied on them in huge moments. In Game 5 with the series tied, it was Pierce who hit a late-game dagger three over LeBron. The next game in Boston, it was LeBron who put on a show to keep his team alive and gave us this now famous look. Riding that high, the Heat took care of business easily in Game 7 back at home. That LeBron would have to get past Pierce one more time to get his first title seemed only right. However, from there on, their battles on the court were nothing really spectacular. Pierce was on the decline bouncing from team to team and LeBron was still playing some of the best basketball of his career. While chasing his second ring in the 2012-13 season, LeBron admitted that while it's tough to choose just one person as his biggest rival in the NBA, it would have to be Pierce. He ended up winning that second ring, surpassing Pierce, which I'm sure stung for Pierce, but even more so because he did it with his old big three running mate. Braun made sure to stick by his guy, all while sneak dissing Pierce in the same breath, calling him a bit of a hypocrite, which Pierce immediately shot back at, reminding LeBron he was dealt to the Brooklyn Nets. It was there in Brooklyn too where Pierce seemed to forget what sport he was playing. In a meaningless preseason game against the Heat, Pierce turned into a linebacker and lowered his shoulder into LeBron's chest as he drove to the basket. Pierce said it was his way of putting the league on notice. Sure, whatever you say, the truth. Pierce also demanded to guard LeBron in the Eastern Conference semifinals that same year and gave his young team some inspirational words not to fear LeBron in the heat, which LeBron essentially said was some rah-rah bullshit and it's just basketball. 
Then he proceeded to go out on the floor and embarrass Pierce. Before that series tipped off, Pierce said the feud between the two was nothing personal. Which is a very odd thing to say when you also don't allow teammates to wear LeBron's shoe around you. But if LeBron ever did take their competition personal, he never really showed it. He made sure to praise Paul Pierce's game as he retired and acknowledged Pierce pushed him earlier in his career. For 19 years, um, you know, put it, you know, his mark on his game. Somebody I've had a lot of battles with, somebody I've always respected, competed against, you know, pushed me in Eastern Conference you know, for quite a while. While Pierce was more reserved during his playing days in regards to how he felt about LeBron, in retirement as an analyst, he said fuck it and let loose. Like in a 2017 interview when he announced he doesn't acknowledge monarchs and how the concept of time just seems to be made up. I don't call no man king, <laughs> so I always said if I, we were the same age, you know, it'd probably be different. How would it be different? I, I, he might have not got those championships in Miami. If I was 26 and he was 26. That was less than a full calendar year after he had retired. It's like he was itching for someone to ask him about LeBron. James would eventually get a laugh in at Pierce's expense when Pierce's jersey retirement hilariously fell on the night the Celtics faced the Cavs. Which, by the way, was the same night the Celtics were supposed to show a tribute video for their former player Isaiah Thomas, but Petty Pierce shut that down because he wanted it to be his moment. The Cavs thrashed the Celtics the whole game, leaving Pierce to awkwardly watch as his old team got destroyed. Which meant LeBron could just clown with his teammates on the bench because the game was already out of hand. Those same Celtics, though, would meet LeBron and the Cavs in the 2018 postseason, which, of course, gave Pierce an opening to talk about himself again. He compared his relationship with LeBron to past NBA rivals Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas, which, like, come on, bro, you're no Isaiah Thomas, as well as saying just how tough it is to let go of those matchups with LeBron. Finding a way to salute him, then immediately one-upping him. But oh yeah, remember, it's nothing personal. Which is, once again, a very weird thing to keep saying when you then turn around and say personal shit. On an ESPN segment ironically named Truth Serum, Pierce actually spit some facts agreeing with LeBron on why he's his biggest rival. Then he promptly gloated that it was him alone that affected LeBron's decision in free agency. It's me, of course. No one has had more playoff battles and more meaningful games than me and LeBron. So Why do you think he moved to Miami beats? Come on now, I sent the U-Haul down there. And, and oh yeah, remember that whole casually spitting towards the Cavs bench thing? Pierce confirmed himself that it went down, and his only takeaway from the moment was being thankful that social media wasn't around at the time to amplify the incident. I'm sure you're watching this and thinking to yourself, wow, has LeBron not fired back at all? He hasn't, at least not publicly. The man keeps his head down and just hoops. And that's kind of what this whole beef has turned into. What was once genuine hate that almost came to blows sparked by Pierce turned into a pure competitive battle on the court. But as LeBron took the leap and their matchups became more one-sided on the court, Pierce kept running his mouth making things one-sided off of it. Maybe it really is just hard to see someone you competed with at the top of your game surpass you. Or maybe Pierce just wants his due respect for being the dude that stopped LeBron from reaching the top early in his career. Whatever it is, as long as Paul Pierce is an analyst and LeBron James keeps balling, this is a beef that's gonna keep on cooking. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you must really enjoy people who don't really like each other. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to see some more beef involving Celtics players, check out this video. Or if you just enjoy people being petty towards each other, we got plenty more for you.